Welcome back to Newsday. Thank you for staying with us. The Senate on Thursday amended the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency Act to accommodate life imprisonment for persons found guilty of storing, moving or concealing hard drugs and other illicit substances. The amendment was considered during plenary, which was presided over by Deputy Senate President Jibreen Barrao after the majority of the senators supported it. The amendment followed the recommendation of the Conference Committee of the two chambers of the National Assembly on Section 11 of the NDLEA Act. The amendment follows the pattern of the version recently approved by the House of Representatives, differing only in the manner of punishment, with the reps prescribing life imprisonment for convicted offenders, while the Senate favors the death sentence. Well, lawyer and current affairs analyst, First Baba Isa, joins us now to discuss this amendment prescribing a life imprisonment for drug offenders and traffickers and how it can affect the war against drug trafficking. It's good to have you with us here on Newsday. All right. <clears throat> Thank you for having me. All right, then. So let's start by understanding the amendment. I want to know what your thoughts are on this new provision in the NDLEA Act that prescribes long uh, life imprisonment for drug offenders. Do you think uh, this is a proportionate response to the problem of drug trafficking in Nigeria? And then also the focus on armed offenders, because the amendment specifically targets individuals involved in tr drug trafficking while armed or disguised. How significant is this provision in addressing the tactics being used by drug traffickers as well? Yeah, uh, well, I, I think um, the, the fight against drug trafficking, uh, I think is, it, it ought to be uh, a holistic fight. So uh, prescribing a stiffer punishment uh, like life imprisonment or even death centers uh, is just part of the fight. It's part of uh, 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 one, one part of it. The other aspect I think that the acts should look at, or even the practitioners of the act, like lawyers, law enforcement, we should look at even the court, is uh, one, we should look at preventive measures. We should look at massive education, massive enlightenment, enlightenment massive sensitization, uh, community uh, engagement uh, in preventing drug trafficking, drug usage. That is on the one side. Secondly, we look at the sentence and, yeah, drug is a serious offense. We know that. And uh, the punishment on paper looks like proportionate to the magnitude of damage or danger drug trafficking poses to all of us collectively. But we, will it actually serve as a deterrent? For instance, uh, for instance, you are talking about the Senate favoring the death penalty. Will the death penalty serve as a deterrent for drug usage, for drug trafficking? Well, personally, I don't think so. Because uh, research has shown that death penalty doesn't even deter crime. And when you come to Nigeria, when was the last time anybody on death row was even killed or even the death penalty, you know, uh, was executed. I think the last time was in 2002. Uh, that is almost 22 years ago that the death penalty was actually carried out on somebody on death row. So when you are talking about death penalty, we are a country that in practice don't even favor death penalty. Most people who have about, who have close to a thousand people on death row with several uh, death sentences hanging on, on their heads, but they're not being executed, you know? So in practice, we don't favor it. And uh, it is not a deterrent to crime. So I think we should rather be looking at how to prevent this crime, not just looking at the sentencing or stiffer punishment. Then on, on that note, I want to also say that the, exist a segment of these offenders that I also consider victims, especially people that use drugs in various quantities. Uh, the people I consider uh, real culprits for me are people that are traffickers, dealers, 
dealing in drugs in large quantities, but there's people that just smoke this stuff. Some of our brothers and sisters, they are victims. So we should also incorporate, being victims does not mean they're not offenders. Don't get me wrong. But what I'm saying is that seeing them as offenders and victims will make us incorporate punishment that will also be geared towards reincorporating them back to the society. We'll look into rehabilitating them, not just punishing them and punishing them and punishing them. I think that's my take on that. Well said, of course, noting that he's mentioned that prevention is definitely better than, than seeking a cure. Well, but I, I'm just wondering how the, does this amended act address the socioeconomic factors that drive drug trafficking beyond the punitive measures, more like shedding light on what you've already touched on? Yeah, that, that's another aspect again. Thank you very much. That's another aspect that uh, the act and the practitioners, the executors of the act, and even the society at large, you look at, you know, uh, the socioeconomic factors. That is not an excuse. You, uh, you know, you cannot cite, I don't believe in citing uh, poverty or, or citing socioeconomic factors as a reason for crime, you know. It looks as if you're creating an excuse for people to go into crime. There are people that are actually having some very hard time, but they don't, you know, go into crime. But it is what it is. Fact is fact. If the young people are given job opportunities, if the economy is booming, if things are better, the truth of the matter is that I believe, statistics also support my belief, that uh, a lesser number of persons will go into crime. But when we have an economy that is strangulating, we have uh, uh, where people are struggling to survive, people resort to crime to survive. People ordinarily that will not resort to crime. So that is an aspect I agree with you that should be looked into in terms of preventing drug usage and drug offenses. We should look at how to create alternative sources of income for young people. We should look at how to create a booming economy where people can survive without necessarily resorting to crime. As much as uh, I said, resorting to crime is not an economic uh, issues or poverty should not be an excuse to go into crime. But the fact is the fact, when people have what they are doing, when the economy is booming, when they have sources of livelihoods, less number of persons will resort to crime. All right, then. So let's talk about the impact on judicial processes and uh, the balance of justice. Life imprisonment in itself is a severe you know, penalty. But what challenges do you foresee in the judiciary ensuring fair trials of now this, you know, uh, life uh, in preventing the misuse of this law of life imprisonment? And how does this amendment balance the need for deterrence with concerns about human rights and, of course, rehabilitative justice? Now, I, I like the way you phrased that question. You, you, you are, the question is phrased with the way that I agree with my earlier position about looking at the whole of this thing holistically, not just about prescribing punishment, and looking good on paper, uh, having a kind of um, putting a face that, okay, you are tough on drugs. Mm -hmm. It is more than that. Say, okay, I want to kill drug offenders or I want to sentence them to life imprisonment. We should look at a total justice reform where from investigation, uh, there's proper investigation. Uh, we make sure that innocent persons don't face life imprisonment because of short investigation. Because as we always say, it is better for 99 guilty persons to go free and for one innocent person to go into jail for doing nothing. So what are the necessary steps being put in place to make sure that when this thief punishment is being meted out, it's being meted out on somebody that actually deserves it. Now, we still have a system where somebody, from when the person is arrested to when somebody is even handed out uh, this uh, thief punishment, it takes several years. Several years, some persons are on a, a waiting trial list, they are in our prisons for drug offenses that don't be taken to court for three years, four years. So we, have, we, need, we need a holistic approach to all of this, whereby drug offenses, the machinery of justice, the processes for administering justice in general and in particular when it comes to drug offenses should be revamped from arrest to, I had a client uh, that was arrested for uh, usage, and he was detained for more than one month. 
and was never arraigned. In fact, charges were filed, the one count charge was filed, and the prosecutors were not even going to court to get a day to get an assignment. And he was in court, he was in, in their detention, in their, in their facility for over a month. We kept struggling to get him out. At the end of the day, he was not even arraigned. So those are the key issues that must be looked at, not just amending a particular section that, that provides for stiffer punishments like life imprisonment or death penalty. So we should look at the whole thing so that when somebody is arrested, somebody is being prosecuted, his human, fundamental human rights will be respected. And when justice is done, whether he's discharged or acquitted, or whether he has been sentenced to life imprisonment or even death penalty, every stakeholder, including the society, should be satisfied that indeed justice was done. And on that profound note, we'd like to thank you for analysis here on Newsday. First, Baba Issa, thank you so much for joining us here on Newsday.